This is the first video of the um, Monetary Policy mini-series, which is Unit 2.5 of the IB Macroeconomics Syllabus. In this video, I'm going to talk about the role of the central bank and how interest rates are determined. So, let's get started. Firstly, the central banks in any country, every country has a central bank. The central bank acts as the regulator of commercial banks. Someone has to regulate those commercial banks and make sure that they are supervised and um, they are not uh, abusing customers and running away with their money. But the central bank also acts as the banker to the government. So it's also the government's bank. Okay. Central banks are usually made responsible for interest rates and exchange rates in order to achieve macroeconomic objectives. So they monitor and adjust interest rates and exchange rates in order to achieve macroeconomic objectives. So some key definitions here. The first one is monetary policy. I'm defining these now so that when I use these words later in the video, you are able to follow. Monetary policy is the government's use of interest rates and the supply of money to influence aggregate demand and the level of economic activity. It's when the government uses the supply of money and interest rates to affect aggregate demand and the level of economic activity. Interest rates. When I say interest rates, what am I talking about? An interest rate is the price of borrowing money or the return from saving money at financial institutions. If you borrow money, you pay the money back plus the interest rate. If you save money, your reward for saving is the interest rate that you receive. So it is the price of borrowing as well as the return of saving. What do I mean when I say supply of money? Supply of money is the total amount of money circulating in the economy at any one point in time. It includes notes and coins, but also bank deposits, all loans, outstanding loans, and credit. So it's not just the notes and coins. It refers to deposits, loans, and credit. These definitions will help you follow the rest of the video. So, since I mentioned in the previous slide that the interest rate is the price of borrowing or lending or, or the reward for um, lending or saving money, um, therefore, like any price, it is determined through um, demand and supply. So where does the demand for money come from? It comes from potential borrowers and investors, people that want to borrow money. They're the ones who demand money. The supply of money, on the other hand, is somewhat controlled and set by the central bank. It's the central bank that prints um, the uh, notes and coins. And also, there's a limit to how much banks can lend in terms of um, credit and deposits. So at any point in time, the supply of money is perfectly inelastic. It is a vertical curve. Now, where they intersect, where they intersect, which is this point here, this determines the equilibrium quantity of money, so we'll, we'll call it QME, and the equilibrium price of money, which is the equilibrium interest rate, IRE, here. Now, the central bank can alter the supply of money to alter interest rates. If the central bank increases the supply of money and the curve shifts from SM to SM1, this will cause the interest rate to fall from IRE to IR1. If the central bank decreases the supply of money and shifts the supply of money curve will shift from SM to SM2 and the interest rate will rise from IRE to IR2. So you can see that by increasing or decreasing the supply of money at any point in time, the central bank can influence the equilibrium interest rate. So the central bank influences the supply of money by... Number one, being the sole issuer of legal tender. Only the central bank has the legal um, power to print notes and coins. So this is very old fashioned. Central banks don't do this anymore nowadays, printing more um, money to increase the money supply. But in the past, if the central bank would print more money, the supply of money would increase and the interest rate would fall. If the central bank attempts to collect notes and coins in circulation, the supply of money will decrease and the interest rate will rise. Another mechanism is to set and change the cash reserve ratio, which is the percentage of cash reserves that commercial banks must keep at the central bank. Commercial banks are the ones that take money from consumers um, that want to save or deposit their money there. Their money there. The central bank um, forces commercial banks to keep a percentage of this cash reserves at the central bank. 
If the central bank decides to increase this cash reserve ratio, the supply of money will decrease and the interest rate will rise. If the central bank decreases this cash reserve ratio, that means commercial banks have to keep less money at the central bank, the supply of money will increase and the interest rate will fall. The third method is by buying and selling government securities. This is actually the most popular method that central banks use to influence the supply of money. If the central bank buys more government securities, it will inject more money into the economy. So the supply of money will increase and the interest rate will decrease. If the central bank decides to sell more, people will pay the central bank money. So the central supply of money will actually decrease because more money will be paid back to the central bank and the interest rates will rise. The fourth um, method by which the central bank influences the supply of money is by changing the bank rate or the base rate or the discount rate. These are all different names for the same thing. Essentially, it is the rate at which commercial banks can borrow sorry, from the central bank. If commercial banks, in order to borrow from the central bank, sometimes commercial banks will borrow from the central bank because they have some liquidity issues or they don't have enough cash when there's a sudden increase in number of people um, withdrawing their money and so on. If the central bank raises that rate at which commercial banks can borrow from the central bank, supply of money will decrease and the interest rate will rise. If the central bank lowers that rate, it's now cheaper for commercial banks to borrow from the central bank Supply of money will increase and the interest rate will fall. So you can see these are all the ways by which the central bank can influence the supply of money in different countries and different economic systems. One final no note though, in reality, there are many, many interest rates in any economy. So it's too simplistic to say that, you know, um, there's only one interest rate. And the central bank, there's no way that the central bank can control all of them. The central bank, CB, cannot control all of them. But by altering the supply of money, it can influence the direction in which they move. So while the central bank cannot decide and control all the interest rates in the economy, by altering the supply of money and whether causing less supply of money or increasing the supply of money, this will affect the direction in which all these interest rates will eventually move. So the central bank can initiate either a rise in all equilibrium interest rates in the economy or a fall just by altering the supply of money and the base rate or the discount rate and so on. Okay, so remember, in reality, there are many interest rates. The central bank doesn't control all of them, but can generally um, influence the direction in which they move by altering the supply of money. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.